Good evening. We begin at five with breaking news just into the newsroom. The Washington Post reporting a federal appeals court has temporarily blocked the cancellation of federal student loans under President Biden's relief program. The court granted an administrative stay while it considers an injunction against the program. It was filed by a group of six Republican led states that are trying to block student loan forgiveness. This comes just days after borrowers started applying for debt relief. Now to a developing story at Kelso High School in Washington. The school's football game and homecoming are canceled tonight, as well as all weekend activities due to a scare earlier in the day. Well, around one this afternoon, the school was alerted to a possible gun on campus and called police. Police showed up, say no gun was fired. There is no evidence a student had a gun. And most importantly, nobody was hurt. But to be safe, they evacuated and searched the entire school. Parents were called to pick up their kids. Again, all weekend activities at Kelso High now canceled. The school says the homecoming dance will also be rescheduled. We have to do something bold and we need to do something different and we need to do it at a scale that will make a difference. Well, that is Portland Mayor Ted Wheeler unveiling an aggressive plan to address homelessness in the Rose City, one that calls for larger sanctioned campsites across the city. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm David Molko and I'm Laurel Porter. This is arguably the most ambitious proposal we have seen from City Hall around homelessness in years. Let's bring in Mike Benner now. Mike, any idea where these sites would be or how much they'll cost? Yeah, valid questions, Laurel, but the mayor is not revealing that quite yet. He says he hopes to identify at least one of the three sites in the very near future. In the meantime, what we do know is that these sites will provide access to bathrooms and food, among other things. The magnitude and the depth of the homeless crisis in our city is nothing short of a humanitarian catastrophe. Some strong words from Portland Mayor Ted Wheeler, who on Friday revealed a new plan to tackle homelessness in the Rose City. There's no issue more critical to Portlanders right now than addressing homelessness. And that tall task will begin as soon as the middle of next week, when the mayor plans to introduce a handful of resolutions. The first calls for the construction of 20,000 units of affordable housing by the year 2033. The second seeks to offer more gig and itinerant work opportunities for those experiencing homelessness. And the third begins the process of prohibiting the 700 unsanctioned camps. This will be done by strongly encouraging people to move to larger scale designated sites where they can camp, among other things. These designated campsites will include access to hygiene, litter collection, meals, and with the county, metro and state's partnership will also include navigation to housing, along with critical service like mental health and substance abuse treatment services. Mayor Wheeler will also introduce a resolution that creates a program where houseless individuals can eliminate citations and low level offenses from their record in exchange for agreeing to mental health and substance abuse treatment. And a fifth resolution formalizes the city's request for assistance from government partners to make this all work. We can no longer tolerate the intolerable. It's time to build, it's time to innovate, and it's time to take some risks to get our city out of this ditch. Commissioner Dan Ryan, along with Commissioners Carmen Rubio and Mingus Maps, appear to be endorsing the mayor's plan, while Commissioner Joanne Hardesty is stopping short of that, only saying she's intrigued by it. Well, I'm worried about uh, such a, a big plan. Vince Massiello watched the mayor's virtual press conference from inside council chambers. The vendor with Street Roots lives in the Right to Dream 2 camp near Moda Center. Massiello has concerns about the mayor's plan to open several large campsites that would each be home to anywhere between 100 and 125 people. It's very hard to, um, to operate those, and I feel like mass campuses could be uh, uh, a lot more work than people are expecting. And perhaps he's on to something, but as Mayor Ted Wheeler points out, addressing Portland's homeless crisis won't be easy. I'm here to face our challenges head on, and I hope you are too. Certainly a lot of work ahead for the mayor and his colleagues. Again, the first reading of these resolutions will come Wednesday of next week. Two days earlier on Monday, the mayor and some others will travel to Los Angeles to see how that city handles homelessness. David, a lot of work and a lot of questions. Thank you, Mike.
Earlier this week, KGW hosted a debate with the Oregonian between Oregon's top candidates for Governor Tina Kotek, Christine Drazen and Betsy Johnson. And we asked them about the mayor's plan and how they would tackle homelessness. I think it is important to make it easier for outreach teams and folks who are providing services to connect with people who are camping outside. And I think this will facilitate, but it has to be done right. It has to be done effectively. And honestly, as governor, I'm going to make sure it does happen. Holding the mayor and the city accountable to getting people off the streets, connecting people with services. You have to know who they are. And right now, when we look at home engagement with our homeless populations in Oregon, we know that the response is almost entirely housing first. That the challenges and the problems of the people living on our street, that they're not approaching it like it's a case management challenge. That we're moving people beyond being houseless and unsheltered into supportive housing, into services, and then on to stability and the dignity of work. I think that has been the hallmark of dealing with the homeless problem, that we can't seem to agree on the methodology. Everybody thinks their way is is the correct way, uh, housing first or deal with the underlying problems. Uh, I, I think that it is imperative that we have metrics to measure our success so that we're not just taking people and moving them from one smaller encampment. It was a great conversation. In case you missed it, we're going to give you another chance to catch the full KGW Oregonian debate in the race for Oregon governor. The full hour that includes the lightning round with a final zinger there will air Sunday evening at night. Of course, you can watch the whole thing right now on our KGW YouTube channel or streaming on KGW+. Now to the Nakia Creek fire and a big boost thanks to the change in the weather. The fire is now 30% contained with help from today's rain. The fire has burned 1900 acres and has not been growing. All evacuation orders have been lifted. Deputies are also sharing more about the people accused of trying to burglarize those evacuated homes or slip into restricted areas. Responded to 87 calls. Uh, and 48 of those were self-initiated either through traffic stops or for contacting individuals in the area um, of the fire. Um, and so total of, uh, I think, three burglary offenses. So we had three total reports of burglaries. The one from yesterday included two houses, and then there was one that was made um, from Monday uh, of the fire as well. Officials think people setting off fireworks may have started the fire. They're looking for two men and two women spotted near the light colored Subaru you see in this picture at the top of your screen. It was taken on Sunday, October 9th, the day the fire started. This evening, two local athletes are making history and they're doing it off the court. They just became the first Oregon high school students to sign deals for their name, image and likeness or NIL for short. And as Catherine Cook reports, it is not just these young athletes who are thrilled. When Jackson Shell stands on the court, people watch. The senior point guard from West Lynn is going places next year. It's the University of Oregon. Today, it's the bank. This week, Jackson and Jesuit high school star and fellow Oregon recruit Sophia Bell each signed name image likeness deals with Portland Gear. They're the first high school students in Oregon history to do that. We wanted to jump in. We thought it's pretty cool to be the first and got to do a really fun little deal with them. So. Portland Gear owner Marcus Harvey wasted no time updating their website. Sophia and Jackson are on the homepage now with their respective t-shirts. They feature their names, jersey numbers, and Portland Gear's trademark P. Harvey says the deal gives both students a mix of monetary and product benefits, and Portland Gear wins too. Yeah, so for us, I mean, it's authentic, it's great. These are regional kids that have grown up and played basketball here, so it's a fun story to tell. It amplifies them and their voices. Um, we get to hook them up with cool products, so they get to wear our gear and rock it with pride. It was a pretty special feeling just seeing, like, my last name on uh, Portland Gear shirt. Jackson says he wants to be a good example for others and loves that he gets the chance to represent himself and benefit from his accomplishments in this way. Kids younger than me that are looking up, hopefully see, you know, that I'm doing it. They can do it, too. I mean, just got to work hard. Uh, I just want to represent, you know, my state going to Oregon. Oregon is now one of about 20 states in the country that allows high school students to profit off their name, image and likeness. This month, the Oregon School Activities Association voted to amend its rules, clarifying that it's now OK for students here to do that. 
it's a change, that's for sure. It's a big change. OSAA Executive Director Peter Weber says there are rules around NIL. For example, students can't feature their school's name or logo in products they endorse, and there are restrictions on payment. You know, the, the compensation can't be, uh, for example, contingent on a specific athletic performance. You know, you scored this many points and you're going to receive this from, from NIL. Yes, Jackson and Sophia are going places, and people will be watching and wearing them. In southwest Portland, Catherine Cook, KGW News.